Okay everyone, let's talk about continuous beams. When we have longer frames or larger slab areas, we deal mostly with continuous beams, like on this plan. Most of the beams on this plan are continuous. A continuous beam has more than two supports, so it has multiple spans, thus making it a statically indeterminate structure, meaning the number of equilibrium equations are not enough to solve for the number of unknowns. Aside from more than two reaction forces, we also need to find out the moments at the internal supports, as well as the moments at the fixed ends. Perhaps the fastest way to find out reaction forces and moments is by using a design software, like eTabs or STAD Pro, where we can input the section and material properties and then the loadings, and then the software will calculate the values. However, without the aid of design software, we can also solve by using various methods like the moment distribution method, stiffness matrix method, the moment approximation method, slope deflection method, or the three moment equation method. For this video, I'm going to use three moment equation method to calculate the moments at internal supports and at the fixed end support. Then I will use the equilibrium equations to calculate the reaction forces. And since I'm using MathCAD, I will define an equation for shear at any given distance x, as well as equations for moments, so that MathCAD will be able to display the diagrams accordingly. The good thing about plotting the shear and bending moment diagrams is we will have a visual idea of how the beam will behave when different loadings are applied. We can visualize which location along the span of the beam will react with maximum moments. May it be positive or the sagging moments or negative, the hugging moments. This maximum moment location dictates the flexural strength of the beam. These are where we really need to carefully reinforce with sufficient steel. So we calculate the required steel area based on the maximum bending moment. And generally, we can use the same amount of steel reinforcement along the entire stretch of the beam. Or for those with less bending moment, we can apply equivalent lesser steel reinforcement, which is an economical approach. Let's quickly review the free moment equation. Say we have a continuous beam with fixed ends like this. This beam has reaction forces R1, R2, and R3. It also has fixed end moments M1 and M3 with an internal moment M2. The free moment equation is defined by this formula. The expression 6A1 times A over L1 represents the moment contribution of half of the load carried by the beam at the left side. And the expression 6 times A2 times B over L2 represents the moment contribution of half of the load carried by the beam at the right side. And it can also be rewritten as WL cubed over 4 since it's a uniformly distributed load. So this is how we derive WL cube over 4. A represents the area of the moment curve. So for a uniformly distributed load, the moment curve is a parabola. The parabola area is equal to 2 thirds base times height, where B represents the length or the span of the beam, and H represents the maximum bending moment, which is WL squared over A for a uniformly distributed load. So we get an area of WL cubed over 12. Then we multiply it with 6 times A over L. Then we get the value WL cubed over 4. For other types of loadings, these are the derived formulas for the expression 6AA over L or 6AB over L. Now let's get into the example. We first define the loadings. For this example, we have a continuous beam with one end fixed and the other end hinged or pin support. It has to carry uniformly distributed loads of W1, W2, W3 with its specified lengths L1, L2, and L3. The total length of the beam is 18 meters. I also indicated the distances of these loads with reference from the starting point or referenced from R1. The first span has an additional point load P1, which is at distance AP1 equals to 3 meters from R1. I wrote in P2 and P3 just in case I want to add point loads for the other two spans, but for this example, I kept them at zero. Next is to define the three moment equations. 
for this beam, M1, M2, and M3 are unknowns. So I need to define three equations to solve for three unknown moments. At point D, there is zero moment because it's a hinge or pin support and it allows rotation. So there's no resisting moment. For the first equation, I extended an imaginary beam span to the left, which has a zero load and a zero moment. I then created the three moment equations for span from zero to A to B. Then I cancel out MO and AO since these are zero values. This leaves me with the first equation. Please note that WL cubed over 4 plus 3 times PL squared over 8 are derived from the expression 6AA over L. Then for my equation 2, I make another 3 moment equation from span A to B to C. Please also note that I added P2 just in case I want to add a point load for the middle span. And then I made another 3 moment equation from span B to C to D. I also added P3 just in case if I want to add a point load for the third span. So I now have three equations so I can solve for three unknown moments. But if for example the hinge or pin support at point D is changed to fixed support, it will develop a resisting moment M4. But we can again do an imaginary extension to create a fourth equation so we can solve for four unknown moments. Next is we calculate the moments at supports. We know that M4 is equal to 0, so from equation 3, M4 times L3 will be equal to 0. And then we derive the formula for M3 in terms of M2. From equation 1, we can also derive the formula for M1 in terms of M2. I then substitute M1 and M3 formulas to equation 2 so that I can derive the formula for M2. My formula equation is lengthy. It's because I added P2 and P3 into the equation, so I don't need to modify it should there be additional point loads. Also, I can actually combine similar terms to make it shorter, but I purposely didn't, so that if I need to modify it, it'd be easier to trace which expression I need to edit. That's why I kept my formula in its pure form. To summarize, these are the derived formulas for M2, M3, and M1. So MathCAD will use these formulas to calculate, and these are the values of the moments at supports. The next part is to calculate the reaction forces. For this part, I will calculate two sets of reaction forces. The first one are the real reaction forces, considering the calculated moments at the supports. The second set of reaction forces is considering there is a zero moment that supports. I will need these reaction forces when I define the equations for shear and bending moment diagrams. So using the equilibrium equations, I first cut the beam using the span from R1 to R2, and I take moment about R2. This will solve the value of R1. Then I take another cut using the span from R1 to R2 to R3, and I take moment about R3. This will solve the value of R2. I take another moment at R3, but this time on the other side, using the span from R4 to R3. This will solve the value of R4. Finally, using the summation of all forces equation, the value of R3 can be solved. So these are the final values of the reaction forces due to the loads and the moments at supports. Then I calculate the reaction forces considering zero moment that supports or a free end condition. These are the formulas. It's basically dividing the loads into half. Again, P2 and P3 are just there to annoy, just in case if these loads are present. So these are the final values of reaction forces for free end condition. Now we are ready to define the equations for shear and moment at any given distance x. The shear equation will be the sum of all forces within any distance x along the beam span. Vw1, Vw2, and Vw3 are the uniformly distributed load forces defined as a function of x. As a condition, the shear equation will only add these forces when x is greater than Aw1, Aw2, and Aw3 meaning the loads are within that distance x. The equation will also include the reaction forces, 
R1, R2, R3, and R4, as well as the point loads P1, P2, and P3, under the condition that these loads are within the distance x. You may also want to check my earlier video on shear and moment diagram for single span beams, where I explained a similar equation. Now for the moment diagram. I will define two equations. One is for the free end moment diagram, and then the other one is for the moments that supports the diagram. I will then superimpose these two diagrams, and the moment areas where they overlap will cancel out. And those areas that will not cancel out will be the remaining moment, hence the final moment diagram. 